All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this time we're going to be covering the SmackDown Live review for the post-WrestleMania. Um, so we had a couple of things advertised for the show. We had uh, Kofi Kingston. He was going to celebrate his uh, WWE Championship win for celebration. We also had um, Becky Lynch come out. And we also had uh, the Hardy Boys versus the Usos for the SmackDown Live Tag Team titles. That's what's supposed to happen at WrestleMania, but it didn't because there was no, no storyline and there was no build to it. So uh, instead, we got the match on uh, post-WrestleMania SmackDown. So it says here, the landscape of WWE changed on Sunday with the WrestleMania 35 as the new champions were crowned and fresh stars emerged on SmackDown. Um... The new WWE Champion Kofi Kingston promised a title celebration alongside the New Day. Uh, Becky Lynch captured the SmackDown Raw Women's title by defeating Ronda Rousey and Charlotte in the main event at WrestleMania. Um, the Miz was unable to get revenge for himself and his dad falling just short against Shane McMahon. I don't mind the fucking motorcycle. Uh, both were expected to appear in the Blue Brand. The Iconics also gloated their win at WrestleMania. Um, and yeah, pretty much just a lot of shit happened. This night promised to be shocking, exciting, memorable, with so much fallout expected from the show's shows. Now we get into the actual show. Uh, the New Day celebrated Kofi Kingston's WWE title victory, and the guy interrupted. So it says here, yeah, it says here Xavier Woods and Biggie celebrated Kofi Kingston's title victory by talking up how important it was to see their hero and friend as WWE champion. They were enjoying the moment until Sheamus and Cesaro arrived and challenged New Day to a six-man tag match with their friend, Drew McIntyre. Yes, Drew McIntyre showed up on SmackDown for the first time. Um, and it looks like Drew's going to be heading to SmackDown, which is good because like he, there's nothing else for him to do in Raw. I mean, he could have been Universal Champion, but I think it would it'd be probably better if he's WWE Champions at some point. So maybe we'll be seeing Kofi Kingston versus Drew McIntyre down the road. So uh, this is what uh, they had to say as far as the, the celebration goes. We are here to celebrate the career of a man that we are honored to call our friend, a man that we are honored to call our brother. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here to celebrate the career of Kobe Kingston. But being able to follow his whole career has been incredible. And at the time when I finally made it to WWE and I got to meet him, it was, uh, I'm out of tears. I'm dehydrated from, the, from Sunday. Uh, it, it, was, it was like meeting one of my heroes, honestly. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And, and the thing that makes this extra special for us is we got this thing together out the mud. The three of us got together. The bond that we share is something special. We came together in an effort to reshape culture and change history. And on Sunday at WrestleMania, Colt, that is exactly what you did. So on behalf of myself, on behalf of Big E, and what it sounds like, on behalf of every single person in this arena, and every single person in the WWE Universe, Kofi, we love you and congratulations! This right here, is an impossible moment. This wasn't supposed to happen. This wasn't in the script. It wasn't supposed to happen. It wasn't in the cards. But here we are. Here we are. And I gotta give a special, I gotta give a very special shout out to my family right over here. My adorable youngest son, Orion. My fearless, show-stealing son, Kai. You saw him at WrestleMania on the second row throwing out the t-shirts. And my amazing, beautiful, super mom of a wife, Chi-Chi. Oh, man. Oh, man. You, 
guys inspire me to be the best possible husband I can be, the best possible father I can be, the best possible role model I can be. You have supported me unconditionally since day one, and I love that, and I love you so much. Thank you. And then here comes Seamus and Cesaro. They're getting fucking booed out of the building. Seth Rollins was mopping the floor with you. And it's not just because you're a B plus player. It's because you didn't have those two beside you. But hey, Kofi, here's our proposal. How about you keep those two out here with you and we have ourselves a good old six man tag team match? I mean, I mean, fine, fine, I guess, but your math, it doesn't add up. I didn't, I don't think you carried the one. It's only two of you, it's two of you. Oh, no, 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 our math, our math is not off. See, when we went to Raw, we made a friend. But don't worry, don't worry, you'll have plenty of time to discuss strategy for a match later on tonight, where the three of you will take on the bar and this man. Out comes Drew McIntyre. I noticed that Drew wasn't on Raw. He didn't show up on Raw, but he showed up on SmackDown. This is the friend that the bar made on Raw. This is no friend, this is a psychopath, a hybrid athlete, one of the most dominant, fierce, and powerful superstars on Monday Night Raw, who has run rough shot over the red brand. So that was advertised for the main event. Drew McIntyre making his SmackDown Live debut. Um, teaming with The Bar to take on The New Day in the main event. Now this was a great celebration that got to the heart of how emotional this whole moment was for New Day. The members got to speak their mind and had fun with it, striking the right balance of genuine excitement and goofy joy. While the Bar's interference on Raw was disappointing, this was a far better use of the team's long-running rivalry with the New Day. McIntyre is a perfect partner for Sheamus and Cesaro and would benefit much more from this pairing than his awkward teaming with Baron Corbin and Bobby Lashley, which makes a lot more sense. Um, Aleister Black, Ricochet, and Mustafa Ali, I'm not calling him Ali, because fuck you, WWE, versus Rusev Shinsuke Nakamura and Andrade Cien Almas. The babyface team looked poised and focused in his first performance together. While Aleister Black and Ricochet looked good as usual, Mustafa Ali was, a, was the one to stand out after catching Andrade uh, with a reverse, reverse DDT and a 450 splash for the win. Afterwards, Randy Orton comes out of nowhere and hits an RKO on Ali, which allowed Rusev to stand over the former 205 Live superstar and taunt him until all of a sudden Kevin Owens comes out and he hits the Bulgarian Brute with a stunner. Now, I don't know what the point of that was, but that was a, just a random... <laughs> This was a fun TV match to showcase a ton of talent in a short time. It was importantly mostly because it finally allowed Mustafa Ali to start rebuilding momentum. He's still one of the best in, on either roster and hopefully will be a major factor on either brand. The, but the appearances of Randy Orton and Kevin Owens were mainly a tease the idea that everyone wants to stand out before the WWE Superstar Shake-Up next week. Both men had limited roles over the past few months and could benefit from a fresh start. So um, Samoa Joe challenges the roster to step up. Uh, he's in the ring. Our truth and Carmella came out to celebrate the Princess of Staten Island's Battle Royal victory WrestleMania before Samoa Joe stormed in the ring, took out Truth for Coquina Clutch. He then promised he would knock out anyone in less time, and then it took him to put out Rey Mysterio on WrestleMania. Out comes the monster among men, Braun Strowman, making his SmackDown Live debut as well. And they get into a brawl, but the Samoan specialist, Samoa Joe, escaped the grip of the monster among men. So it looks like we're going to be seeing Braun Strowman on SmackDown as part of the Superstar Shake-Up as long as Drew McIntyre. And we could be seeing a program with uh, Braun Strowman and Samoa Joe for the United States title. And I think that's, I think that's a great idea because if you really want uh, Braun Strowman to find his way back up to the top in WWE, then it would be a fresh start for him to start right on the blue light, on the brew brand of SmackDown Live. And I think that's perfect. 
And plus, who wouldn't want to see Braun Strowman and Samoa Joe just beat the living shit out of each other? I mean, I, I'd pay out good money for that. Two big men going at it for the U.S. title? Take my fucking money, man. I love this. This segment had a lot of moving parts, but it ultimately amounted to a tease of Joe versus Strowman, which could be fantastic. It is rare WWE has two legitimate monsters who have been built separately from each other over the years. While Strowman and Joe have had bumps along the road in establishing their dominance, they are clearly major stars who can take out anyone. This should be a fantastic rivalry as long as the two are on the same brand by the end of next week. We'll find out. Women's Tag Team Champions, the Iconics versus the Brooklyn Bells. I have no idea who these chicks are. But one of them was uh, apparently uh, a local competitor, I guess. The Iconics decided to start their new tag team title reign by defending the belts against undefeated local competitors, the Brooklyn Bells. While Kristen and Carissa attempted to make a statement, they were quickly put away thanks to a dumb performance from Peyton Morris and Billy Kay. However, uh, after the match, Paige was shown watching backstage and was asked after the match why she was on SmackDown. She made it clear she will be bringing a new tag team to WWE next week as a part of Superstar Shakeup. <coughs> <coughs> Kyrie Sane and Io Shirai. The Sky Pirates. That's just my bold prediction right there. Uh, the Iconics defeat Brooklyn Bells retain... A squash match rarely makes much of an impact, but this was a good way to sell the Iconics as champions. They feigned that the idea they would follow the same ideals as, as, that ruled Sasha Banks and Bailey's title ring, but they decided to fight e easy competition. It was great to have Bay Page return to WWE seemingly in a manager-like role. It will be interesting to see which tag team likely from NXT she will bring up. Very, very interesting there. Shane McMahon gloats about a WrestleMania victory. So Shane McMahon comes out. And he states that WrestleMania 35 sold out because everyone came to see him defeat The Miz. He gloated about pulling that off as well as what he did to Miz's dad, George, who made sure the A-lister was not in the blue brand this week. As he continued to boast, he forced Greg Hamilton to announce his greatness as the best in the world, dragging the announcer by his tie up the ramp until he pleased him with his delivery. This segment was perfectly fine, though it felt like it did not accomplish anything. It was the same routine as usual, and it mostly felt like stalling with, before Miz would come out and get his revenge. Uh, the quote, which could probably happen next week. Uh, this would this would have been a great moment to take a chance on this first SmackDown at the Mania, but instead it was just a tease for whenever McMahon snaps and attacks Hamilton. So I don't really know what the point of that was, but okay. SmackDown tag team title match: The Usos versus the Hardy Boys. This was a damn good fucking tag team match, bro. And if they, if they really wanted to, they could have put this on WrestleMania, and it would have been a show stealer. But uh, you know, I, I'm glad we were still able to see it. Before the shakeup, because we could probably see the Hardy Boys could move to Raw. Uh, we could see the Usos move to Raw. We could see both teams move to Raw. Either way, it could, it could still potentially happen in the near future, but it's great that that happened now. So in Battle Brothers, the Hardy Boys seem far more focused in this title match than the Usos. A splash was not enough for the champions to put this away, and then Jeff Hardy ducked the double Us, setting up a twist of fate for Matt Hardy and the Swanton Bond from the charismatic Enigma to give the Hardys a big title win. Afterwards, um, Matt and Jeff looked to celebrate their victory because the Usos lost the, Smack team, the SmackDown Tag Team titles to the Hardy Boys. Therefore, the Hardy Boys are your new SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Awesome. Um... And before they can celebrate their victory, out comes Lars Sullivan, who again makes his presence felt, making the SmackDown debut. Just like he took out Kurt Angle in Raw, he decides to take out the Hardy Boys and lay both men out with a freak accident. I don't know what the point of that was either. I really don't know. Um, the Hardy Boys defeated the Usos, comes in SmackDown Tag Team Champions. And so that's just the point of that. While the match was not as exciting as it would have been five years ago, it was still a nice moment to see two great teams clash for the first time. But in my opinion, I think it was a damn good fucking tag team match. But again, people had different opinions about everything, so it's not always going to end up being the same predicament as you wanted to. But the Usos losing felt wrong, but it does free them up to work on Raw for the first time since the brand split comes next week. Sullivan continues to look impressive in short bursts, but it is odd that he is only targeting Legend so far. Perhaps it is leading somewhere and it is not immediately clear. I hope it doesn't mean he's like the new legend killer because that'd be stupid. You're not just going to rip off Randy Orton like that. Becky Lynch promises to pull a double duty and she takes on every challenge. That's what it says here. So she comes out focused and confident with both her titles on her shoulders, stating she was unfazed by the attack of Lacey Evans on Raw. The man also says she would be ready for all challengers and would work both brands as champion. As she headed to the back, Evans caught her with another right hand and sent Lynch hard into the stage, and then they brawled again. <laughs> uh, Monday's night surprise by Evans was more, far more effective than this repeat, but it was still as a fine segment as a whole. Lynch, Lynch knows how to work a crowd and is clearly loving the spotlight here. 
But whatever comes next, it will be up to the man to help elevate the lady, the lady of WWE to feel like a legitimate challenge. Hopefully, the others will also step up as Lynch versus Evans alone is not going to feel like a true headliner for the women's tag team, for the women's division. I spot the tag team division, for the women's division. Um, I don't know, man. This could, we could be seeing this at Money in the Bank. We could be seeing this um, at the Saudi Arabia show. I mean, who knows? But uh, I find it funny how uh, Becky Lynch said something about this on Twitter, and she's like, oh, so the, uh, the new Charlotte is coming after me now for both, for both my titles. Okay. I thought that was hilarious. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we get into the main event. The New Day versus The Bar and Drew McIntyre. This was quick. Despite Drew McIntyre looking unstoppable and within the ring, no one was, step was stopping Kofi Kingston on top of his game. The WWE Champion managed to survive the best shots of Sheamus and connect with Trouble in Paradise to take the win. Kofi then celebrated with his whole family in the ring to end SmackDown. Now, this was a far better way to celebrate Kingston's championship victory than Monday's random tag match, but it was con consistently sloppy, which is surprisingly given the talent involved. The New Day got to win as a tag team and continued to enjoy the spotlight, while the bar was most likely punching bags. This match was simply typical of WWE's booking of these post-WrestleMania shows this year, while it hinted at some interesting stories for the future that is most likely forgettable. But however, next week we'll be seeing likely far more ex chaotic and exciting um, as far as the show goes. So, uh, it was a quick one, but, uh, there's your SmackDown live review for the week. Um, I still got to do my, uh, NXT and 205 live review. That's going to be coming up shortly. Uh, I'm going to see if I get to do it, uh, maybe after this video uploads, but, uh, if not, I'll probably do it later in the day. Because, again, my plan is to, is to do all three videos in one day. So, uh, so far we got the Raw review up. I'm about to upload the SmackDown review. And uh, then we'll move on to uh, the NXT and 205 live review. So, guys, if you enjoyed the SmackDown review, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, favorite, RKL the like button out of nowhere, tap the bell for notifications, um, check out the Raw review. I'll put the link in the description right there or in the card, whatever. And, uh, yeah, so I'll see you all for uh, 205 Live and NXT. We're not going to be getting much of NXT because usually – the post NXTs, we also always see uh, just random matches that were sh that were shown or pre-taped before Takeover New York went on the air, or when whenever Takeover Takeovers go on the air, they always just show these random matches. So uh, that's what we're going to be seeing on this week's NXT. So probably Two Hundred Five Live is going to be f uh, more exciting as far as this week goes, but we'll see what happens. So uh, until then, I'll see you all in the next one. Too sweet.